I think our live stream has gone down, so we're just getting making sure we got video so we can upload it a bit later. Such are the challenges of these times. So harvest, um, I've got a bit of a, a quiz. We're not going to have any more beeping because I'm afraid the cows might stampede out and <laughs> damage some cars. Um, but just to, to get you in the mindset uh, and to maybe test some of you farmers, see how much you know about your, your business. Um, first question, globally, how many people work in the agricultural sector? sector? Um, I'll give you two options. We're going to do the beeping this time, but just for you to think about, is it one billion or two billion? Have a discussion in your car. And the answer is it's one billion. One billion people involved in, in agricultural work, which makes it a massive thing. Harvest impacts that many people around the world and everyone else obviously who benefits from that, uh, but those directly. Um, Britain is ranked number 11 in p potato producing countries. Which country is number one? Is it India or China? The answer is it's China. Apparently India is number two, um, and like I said, Britain is number 11. How many hectares of farmland are there in the UK? Is it 10 million or is it 20 million? Wyndham reckons 10, it's 20. Sorry, Wyndham. <laughs> uh, what percent of that land is for crops? Is it 25% or is it 35%? And the answer is it's 25%. Um, what ones have we got? This is good. On what car manufacturer started life as a tractor manufacturer? Is it Lamborghini or is it Ferrari? And the answer is Lamborghini. There we go. Put how many you got on a card and I'll ignore it and you won't get a prize. Um, but just to get into the mindset of harvest. Harvest, this time where we, we remember the provision of God. This time in, in the Bible where the people, it was one of their biggest festivals, bigger even than Christmas, uh, mainly because Christmas didn't exist in the Old Testament, but it, it was their biggest time. It was the time when they would gather in and they would celebrate. We did it a few years ago, if you remember. We built that booth um, where, where people would live, and they still do today, Jewish people would live in these booths as a reminder of when they had nothing but a tent to live in, um, to remind of the provision of God. And it comes from Deuteronomy 8, where God says to the people, I'm going to take you into a new land. And I'm going to give you this good, good land. And when you get there, don't forget me. When you get there, don't take it for granted. Make sure to remember and to show gratitude. Or you'll become proud and, and you'll destroy the gift that I have. And it's that idea that I wanted to think out today. And when we think of all that we have, all that's been provided. Sorry. Um, there, there is this truth that we just need to get our heads around. That for you and I... What we need next, hello, is that an amen? <laughs> what we need next is not the next level of accomplishment, not the next step on the career ladder, and not, not another relationship, not more accumulation, not more things. What we need really is an appreciation for what we have. If you grow in the gifts of God, but you don't grow in gratitude, then you've gained nothing. And if God gives to you, but you don't know how to respond to that in gratitude, then you aren't living life to the full. Jim Carrey, the famous actor, once said, I wish everybody could become rich and famous so that they would know that that is not the answer. And it's maybe easy for us to say, well, that's all right for you because you've done it. Um, I, I would like the chance to experience it for myself. But we have to sort of bow down to his experience and say, maybe that is true. That this accumulation, this unsettlement, this discontentment that we're sold constantly isn't the answer because what we need is to be grateful for what we have. Now, this isn't anything new. If you, you're in the world of self-help or, or just online blogs or anything like that, you'll see that gratitude is big business nowadays. There are gratitude journals that each night you take and you write down the things that you're thankful for. There are gratitude seminars, lessons to teach you on how to be grateful. There are courses on it. There are advice on it. It's, it's big business on, on how we need to be more grateful because people have realized there is a link between our wellness, our wholeness, our flourishing and gratitude. And so I want to just bring the Bible to bear on that and say, how do we really be grateful? How do we learn to respond in the right way to what we have? And I've got three steps as we're going to go to class one, then class two, and then we're going to graduate in gratitude today as we learn what it means for us today on this day harvest when we remember the provision of God for us to respond in the right way. The first thing is to be thankful for if you can all just say that, I am thankful for. That's the first step of being grateful. It's simply seeing what you have 
and responding with thanks. The question really isn't, how do you have a grateful heart? The question is, do you have grateful habits? Psalm 107 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If there's something good, say it. We're told if it's good, worthy, beautiful, honourable, think on such things. If you have something good, then give thanks for it. Now, this is the first step. This is kind of the self-help level that, that we're, we're maybe familiar with. But it's a habit that we should be cultivating. You need to be thankful for what you have. To do that, you need to take the time to see what you have. And to put a habit in place that you give thanks for it. In particular, I'm always reminded at times like this that we are thankful for many things, provision and food and, and shelters and covers and warmth and things like that, but thankful for people also. Now, I'm sure you do it on birthdays and anniversaries. You write a card and you fill it in and you tell them, I'm so thankful for you. And that's good, but it's kind of to be expected. That's kind of the base level, that, that you're doing well with that, um, but, but you need to do it at other times as well. Now, for goodness sake, I don't want any letters um, from anyone saying, my husband didn't write me a card because you told him not to do it then. Um, I, don't, I don't want that on my doorstep. But we need to be cultivating this and saying, I'm thankful for, and simply speaking out what we're thankful for. To, to take the time, to take stop, to pause and just look at what God has blessed you with. And to respond with a simple thanks. C.S. Lewis said, if you only ever pray thank you in your entire life, then you've prayed enough. That there is something about it that's so basic and yet so rewarding, so refreshing, so renewing to us. And as you do it, what happens is you become more aware of what you have. If you're here today and you're thinking, well, I've got nothing to be thankful for, you need to make a choice to be grateful. You need to make a choice to say, I am thankful for and list something. And the next time you go out, you'll be more aware. It heightens it. This attitude of gratitude is more a lens of gratitude. You start to see things differently. So on the way here today, um, I was driving the minibus up here and I came to a roundabout and a car came round the roundabout the wrong way uh, and then drove on the wrong side of the road towards me and then swerved out of the way and gave a nice, gentle, apologetic wave um, for doing so. And what I thought at that moment was what I'm sure what many of you would have thought. I thought, oh, that poor gentleman, I'm sure he didn't realise he made that mistake. I do hope that he's quite all right. At least that's the church-friendly version that I'm allowed to, to say up here. But what happened? <laughs> Actually, it wasn't that. You can probably guess. Um, there, there was something else. But all week I've been thinking about gratitude. I've been thinking, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for. And I found myself, and this isn't to, to big me up, this is just something that I've noticed this last week. I found myself saying, I'm so thankful that I grabbed my snack today. Because I came out and I thought I might get hungry later, I'll go back grab a snack, which added on about 20 seconds to my journey, which is 20 seconds between me and where this guy was, which may have had a very different result had I been there. And I suddenly thought, that's it, that, that lens of, because of this week I've been thinking about it and talking to people about it and chewing it over, I had a different lens. I did respond one way to start with, let's not <laughs> let's be clear, but straight away this other lens came in, this other response that there is something here to be grateful for. God is, is very gracious and he doesn't demand us that we're grateful but he invites us to see his goodness and the natural response to that is to be grateful. You have many things in your life that demand that you're grateful for. Normally they come about once a month in the form of a bill. So you're probably very grateful for a warm house and every month they make you show your gratitude by giving you a bill saying you owe us however much it is to show your gratitude for having a warm house. And if you don't do that, they cut you off and they say your bill is now overdue. God doesn't do that. When we forget to thank him, he doesn't send us a bill. He just keeps pouring out his goodness. He just keeps doing it again and again. He keeps showing us. He keeps encouraging us. He keeps pouring out into our lives until we finally stop and say, thank you for your goodness. I see it. He doesn't demand it. He doesn't force it. He simply keeps pouring it out until we recognize it. We appreciate it. We savor it. And when we do that, suddenly things change. And so we thank him. We thank him for, for rainy days and we thank him for cars to be able to sit in on them. We thank him for the eyesight to be able to see what is going on, for our hands to lift in worship. We thank him for the clothes on our back and the roof on our head, for the husbands and wives that encourage us and sometimes annoy us, for the, the running water in our sink, for the, the crazy family that we have, for teaching us, for, for all the things that we get to savour in food and, and in fellowship. For grace when we fall, for prayers that are answered, for ways that are made out of no way, 
for money to pay the rent, for sunshine, for rain, for holidays, all these things we just stop and we just say, I am thankful for. Now that's level one. And that might be your takeaway today um, and, and your thing to start putting into practice, just to cultivate a habit. Even in the face of when it, you can't see much, to start it and see it grow. But there is another one. Thank you for is level one. But then the next level, David teaches us, which is thank you even though. It says it in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though, even though, even though this is hard, even though this situation is dark, even though it looks bleak, even though I'm still thankful for your goodness and your mercy follow me. That song talked about it. Your goodness follows me. That's the verse in Psalm 23. It's literally your goodness hunts me down. It's like it, it, God's goodness is, is on the prowl. It's out to get you. It's after you. It wants to come into your life. It wants to bless you. It wants to fill you. And David says, thank you, because even though I'm in the valley, that goodness is on my back. It's chasing me. It's coming after me. It's in my life and I can't escape it. And so I thank you, even though, to be able to say that, even though my heart is broken, even though I am mourning, even though I am going through this, it is well with my soul and I am thankful. The first level is where you thank God for something. The second is where you thank God, even though you can't see any goodness. You, you, there is something about his presence, something about his grace that's keeping you. I've had the privilege of taking many funerals uh, as a church. And I think not once have I gone into a funeral of someone as a, from our church where the family haven't said, just to be clear, this is to be a thanksgiving service. That's an even though kind of thankful. Even though we have lost this person, even though our heart breaks, even though we are giving thanks at this time. This is a time to celebrate the goodness of God in their life. This is a time to celebrate and give thanks for all that they meant to us. That's it, that evidence where it's bleak and it's dark and it's a valley, but still I am thankful even though. That's another level. That's not just thankful for, that's something else. And in the presence of my enemies, David says, in the presence of my insecurity, in the presence of my lack, in the presence of my addictions and my confusions or what I've lost, in the presence of that, even though my cup overflows, even though I'm not there where I want to be, I give you thanks. And people are able even to look into the face of death, walking in that dark valley and say we choose this moment to give thanks it's powerful it's real and it speaks of this hope and this joy that we are able to give thanks for that's part of this heart of praise that david teaches us thankful for thankful even though and then there's one more level which paul shows us which is i'm thankful because it's not the same as thankful for that something is thankful for cake because cake is a good thing but thank you because is something bad has happened. But somehow, God, you have brought something good out of it. And it's kind of the graduation. It's the final level of, of giving thanks. To have a sense of God's purpose, to be aware of something that he's doing. And Paul talks about this when he has this thorn in this flesh, this thing that he prays again and again. God, get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. And it remains, but he learns to be thankful because of it. Again, we have people, and this is... What's wonderful is these <laughs> witnesses, these illustrations aren't stories, they are people's lives. We have people in this church who have been through cancer. We have people in this church who have been through illness and trial and separation and, and poverty. And when you talk to them today, and this sounds crazy, I know, but you talk to them and they say, I would have skipped the cancer for anything. I would have skipped the poverty for anything. I would have skipped the trial for anything, but I would never trade for all the world what I learnt and what God showed me because of it. That's another level of thankful. Not thankful for it. Not thankful even though, although when they're going through it, they may have been. But on the other end, saying, I'm thankful because of it. Because of something that I should never be thankful for. Because of something that I would never wish on anyone. But because of it, my God has shown himself to be bigger. My God has shown himself to be a provider. My God has held me. He's kept me. He has taught me. He has grown me. And I'm thankful because I would not be who I am. I would not have the witness that I have. I would not have the story and the relationship and the closeness with my saviour that I have if it hadn't been for that. And so I'm thankful because of it. That's what Paul says. He says, all things, in all things, God works together for our good. Not all things are good. And all things work for our good. That's not what he says. But in all things, 
I don't often eat raw flour or raw eggs or raw baking powder because it would be disgusting but you mix them together and in it something good comes out of it and that's a poor illustration but that's it that there are things that are going on that by themselves you would never give thanks for and you'd never say I'm blessed for this but as you journey through it and you God accompanies you through it you come out saying I'm thankful because of it some of you are confused by God because you've been through those dark times and I don't know what picture of God was presented to you maybe it was a God who was doing it to you God like an abuser who was was harming you and then forcing you to praise him God didn't cause it God didn't send it but God is big enough that it will not stop him it will not stop him finding a way to bless you through it it will not hinder him it will not hold him back it will not reduce his love his goodness will still come through here's why this matters these levels and you can see whatever level you're at and there's another step for you to take or maybe there's something for you to choose to give thanks for today that that perhaps you haven't been doing but this matters because gratitude is at the very heart of our faith the sign that the, the one thing that assures anyone that you get it you get what god is about and you get what he is doing is that you you are grateful because here's what john 3 16 says and i don't really need to tell many of you but let's just remind ourselves for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him wouldn't perish but would have eternal life and that little word give is the key it's a gift and the only thing that shows that you truly have received a gift that you truly understand a gift is gratitude not i'm going to pay you back for it because that's then it's not a gift not i'm going to earn it because then it's not a gift i receive it and i'm grateful that shows that you understand what god is up to he wants to give you a gift every blessing is a gift we don't believe god is keeping track of attendance even though we have to we don't think that god needs our worship although i'm sure he enjoys it we don't think that he's going to smite us when we're naughty or or any of these other silly characters we believe that our god is a giver who gives us a gift of love expressed in sacrifice, an invitation. And the only thing he asks, he doesn't even ask of it, but the only thing that that makes sense in light of that is to say, I'm so grateful. That's That's where our faith is. It's I'm grateful for a gift. The faith that Jesus invites us to is to receive a gift. And today on harvest when we celebrate so many good gifts paul says don't forget these all these gifts all these things that you've probably passed by many times they are breadcrumbs if you follow the breadcrumbs they will lead you to a hand it's the hand of your father who gives every good gift and gave the greatest gift and the only response that that is ever needed is thank you the only thing that, that your heart needs to do is say thank you that's the sign that you've got it it's the sign that it's yours i've taken hold of it i've come and, and you've put it in my hand and thank you as hannah said that word isn't big enough yet it is all we have and it's all that's required if you're here and 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 you got dragged along because your family were going out for a drive and they suddenly turned in here and and <laughs> now you've round up in a church service and church isn't really your thing and god isn't really your thing i would i would urge you and i would encourage you because it was it's my story just to reconsider your picture of god your understanding of god because it's good if it doesn't sound like good news if it's never sounded like good news then it may not be the God that we are trying to worship today it may not be the Jesus that we, we are so thankful for and I know it's a shame we can't mingle and we can't talk to each other but the stories that I've shared are in the cars around you the things I'm telling you they're, they're not ivory tower stuff that sounds nice it, they are being told in the lives of people sat at least two meters maybe more away from you whose hearts are marked by gratitude whose lives are shaped by simple thank you and find that they are more full because of it more whole because of it more alive because of it and more aware of of many little things in their life because they have graduated in gratitude 
they've learned it as a way of life of seeing things and so here's your task you can do it now if you're in the car with someone these words I am thankful for and you finish that sentence if you've done that and that's a part of your life here it is I am thankful even though some of you will need that I understand because of the situation you're in and some of you maybe on the other side maybe with a, a dark history and things that you don't like to talk about maybe you could just try saying I'm thankful because and just to try seeing a bit more to increase your gratitude even if you're not a Christian it's just it, it'll make you happier if you are a Christian it makes sense because it's part of the fabric of the world that we think we're in that behind it there is a God although it sometimes seems like it's always winter and never Christmas there are things to be found to be grateful for there are things to be seen that are good just in front of us if we'll open our eyes and see them so I'm going to do that I'm going to pray thank you and then we're going to listen to some more worship songs and then uh, because of the nature of things we'll, ask, we'll guide you out we'll get our handy stewards back uh, and guide you away but note them down text them now if you can talk to them with the people in your car as we respond in the only way that makes sense on harvest the only way that makes sense in light of the abundance that we have thank you father i thank you i thank you for these people thank you for the story that they tell thank you for the witness that they are Thank you for the things that I've noticed this week that I hadn't noticed before. Thank you for the small things that, that make a big difference. Thank you for the big things that are so unexpected. Thank you for the encouragement that I receive. Thank you for the people in my life. I thank you that even though times can be tough, even though we are in uncertainty, even though there is much to, to fear and to, to be concerned with, thank you though, even though it can sometimes seem cloudy, in the stillness I still sense your presence, in the quiet I'm still aware of your voice, your rod and your staff comfort, your goodness comes after me. And I thank you because through many trials you have brought me through great is your faithfulness not because it's a verse in the bible but because you've demonstrated it and through pain and through things that i would never wish to go through again you have shown yourself that i am what i am today by the grace of god that has brought me through and so i thank you because of it i pray today lord our hearts would expand in gratitude our eyes would open in gratitude and we would see that it would be a new lens to see things it would it would make us appreciate it would make us savor again those things that we've overlooked i pray that that families would savor again one another as they look through the lens of gratitude i pray we would enter our work and witness with a new vigor as we see it through the lens of gratitude i pray we would see our life and opportunities with new hope and perspective through the lens of gratitude I pray we see the opportunities that are right in front of us as we open our eyes to them. If we need to start small, Lord, show us these small things, but let it grow. Let gratitude pour out and let praise return to its source. Our good Father, with a simple thank you. So as we worship again, Lord, help us to be grateful. Amen.
kind of typical we do a whole talk on giving thanks and remembering to give thanks and we forget to do communion um, which is called the Eucharist which means Thanksgiving that it's the thing you do to give thanks uh, and so thank you for, for those watching uh, if you do want communion or you need it delivered then put on your hazard lights now and the, um, the helpers will come and and bring it to you um, if that's okay uh, that, that it's interesting that when Jesus, th this word that came to, to represent the bread and the wine, this, this meal that we have, it is, is that, it, it's, it's thanksgiving. It's, it's something to do, to be thankful for. Again, it comes back to the heart of our faith. It's the, the first response, this simple bread, this simple wine. It's the, it's the thing that we're given to say thank you. It's the first step of our faith as we receive it. It's, it's the reminder that we come back to. It's the, it's the thing that, that makes it from something that some bloke on a stage once said to something that I accept in my heart and, and receive for myself. I am grateful for this because it's for me. I'm thankful for this and what it represents because it was done for me. And so what we have today is, again, the bread and the wine and an opportunity to, to give thanks. An opportunity to say, I receive again what you've given me I receive afresh this gift for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe would have eternal life and so I'm going to pray just give the helpers a bit more time to, to get around the cars and then we'll take it together
think there's one more down here. So at that meal where Jesus solidifies this and, and, and makes us the thing that we do, the, the thing that reminds us, the thing that brings us back to that gift, he takes the bread and he breaks it. And he says, this is my body given. This is, this is, the, represent, this is the gift, me, given for you. And so, Father, as we take this bread, we remember again the gift. And we thank you for it. Amen. He then takes the cup and says, this cup is the new covenant, the new arrangement, and it's not going to be bought with your money, it's not going to be bought with your expertise or your even your holiness or your religious activities, it's going to be bought by my blood. I'll pay for it. And then it's a free gift for you just to receive. So as we take the wine, we remember the cost. It's a free gift, but it, it's not cheap. It cost him his life that could be free for us to receive. Jesus, we thank you for it. Amen.